Out, there's a provision in House Bill 765, a couple provisions that relate to impacts to streams. Uh, one says basically for one of the larger flow streams that flows year-round, it doubles the amount of damage you can do to the stream without having to make up for it in mitigation elsewhere. One of the other provisions um, for streams that don't flow all year-round, they're called intermittent, they're the small streams up at the very top of a watershed. They're particularly important for water quality and for the health of the, of the entire watershed downstream. They also help with flood control. Um, the, the bill says that when those are destroyed, they don't have to be replaced at all. No, no mitigation to offset that damage. Another provision, this is in House Bill 44, um, also affecting water quality, would uh, effectively destroy the riparian buffer protections that we have in several watersheds. Riparian buffers is a complicated sounding phrase, but it's basically strips of forest along our streams and rivers. Um, and they play a, a really critical function keeping nutrient pollution, nitrogen and phosphorus, out of the water so that it won't cause algal blooms and kill fish and destroy water quality. Um, they have been found repeatedly, riparian buffers, these forested buffers, have been found repeatedly to be the cheapest way that local governments and communities can keep their waters clean. Now what's the justification when you hear that, when you hear you describe that, it seems so absurd, that the justification uh, must be that it's either costly or it, it impinges on development? You know, this is interesting. So um, <coughs> one, one of the first things you know when proposals get dropped into one of these big bills is that folks don't want to actually have the discussion in detail about what's the reason for the proposal. Um, in this case, when this gets brought up, um, proponents of that provision have said, uh, well, folks ought to be able to develop their property that's actually, we've never treated property as, as an absolute right. We always say it's balanced against the rights of other people. And this is an example of that. It's great to develop your property, but if developing it down to the water's edge means other people are going to suffer from flooding downstream or, or increased water quality problems where the community will face fish kills downstream, that's a reason that property rights aren't absolute. They're balanced against each other.